cause codes, external cause. See. Hope everybody enjoying the session, learning something new. Hope ain't nobody napped on me. Okay. So external calls, turn to your ICD-10 book. And if you don't have the book and you got your app, I'm going to have something for you uh, there as well. So if you have your ICD-10 book, turn to page 1223. 1223. And that category on the tab on the page number is going to say external causes of morbidity. External causes. These are your external cause codes. <laughs> like diseases or injuries you can get from something externally happened to you. Not no disease or no manifestation, something like you had a car crash or you fell off your motorcycle or you fell down the steps. External causes. Causes to something outside, external. So open fracture. Open fracture is one that pierces the skin. A fractured bone that pierces the skin. So this is an important word to know as well. Sequela. Some people say sequely. Some people say sequela. So that means a late effect. An inactive residual effect or condition produced after the acute portion of an injury or illness has passed. For an example, if a person had a stroke, and after they had a stroke, they've noticed that now they, their eye twitches. I mean, just, their eyes just twitches nonstop. And when they go to the doctor and the doctor say, hey, uh, Mr. Davis, um, your eye is twitching due to the stroke that you've had. So the eye twitching will be called a sequela of the stroke, which means that's a late effect of you having a stroke. That's something that happened to you as a result of the stroke. So that's what sequela mean, like a late effect. Something that's going to happen to you after you have a disease or injury. So these are important definitions. Systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Sepsis. With. If you see the word with, this means associated with, due to, because of. For an example, if a patient has cataract or has a uh, diabetes with diabetic cataract or diabetes with cataract the doctor is basically or the provider because they hate when I say doctor some of them are not doctors they are nurse practitioners they are physician assistants so I have to say provider to make everybody feel included so make sure you start using the word provider versus doctor or whatever provider so when the provider lists due to or with or whatever, I know that these diseases are together and I would then use what we call a combination code. Combination code. Your Z codes. Your Z codes, you know what? Let me go back. And I might have to reiterate it again because I'm sure I have it in the presentation. But I want to go ahead since I'm right here on the external causes and I want to talk about this because I don't want to forget anything. And if I had, I'd rather go over it, and this is just me, I'm sorry if it bothers you, but I'd rather go over it twice than leave it out one. So, you know, if it's in the presentation later on, it's in there, but I want to go over it now when I'm thinking about it. So let's turn to page 1225. <laughs> 1225. And look for V01. And if you don't, oh. And if you don't have your book on the app, look up V as in Victor, 01. And the app will let you know as well that you don't have enough characters. You know how in your book it's going to have the numbers on the side to say, hey, you don't have enough characters in this code. This code not valid. Well, on the app, it's kind of like an a octagon, an orange octagon that lets you know this code is not valid. If the octagon is not green, it's not a valid code. It should be like a green or something, or it'll tell you you're missing uh, some more letters or characters. So V01. V01. So if you're on the app 
and you go to V01, go ahead and click on it, V01.0. And then click on the first one from there, the V01.00. Click on those until you get to the final code. So for those who have your book on 1225, I want you to look to the right side of the page on 1225 under V01, and you're going to see an A equals initial encounter, D equals subsequent encounter, and S equals sequela. Let me explain that to you. When you have things like poisoning, external cause injuries, fractures, they're going to require a seventh character. So if you see it's kind of highlighted in peach or pink or whatever you want to call it, uh, the A, the D, and the S, read what it says right above there. It says the appropriate seventh character is to be added to each code from category V01. So this is, is an example of a chapter-specific guideline. This is basically saying any code that you're going to use from V01, you have to have seven characters. That's exactly what it's saying. So make sure you read those instructional notes and stuff when you're looking for these codes on the exam. A lot of times when coders fail the exam, they don't typically fail the exam because they do not know the material. They fail the exam from second guessing themselves and overlooking and not being as detailed as possible with these instructional notes. So let's explain this seven character. So the seventh character goes on the end. The code cannot be longer than seven characters. That's the longest code, seven characters. So your seventh character is typically going to be a letter. The most common letters used for the seventh character is A, D, and S. A, D, and S. Mr. Brown and everybody else, I think Ramonica as well, thank you everybody else who is already certified. They may already know this information. So um, everybody that's already certified, we're going to get to the nitty gritty for you, chapters four through nine. Uh, so basically, this is kind of like a refresher for those who already have one or more credentials um, for this year. So thank you for your patience as I catch everybody else up to our speed because we all want to be on the same level at the end of the day. So seventh character. When you have an injury, external cause, poisoning, fractures, things like that, the provider has to state <clears throat> what stage, what phase of healing, or what visit are you on with this? Because this is ongoing. If you fracture your leg, you're going to have to go to the orthopedic doctor for the course of a few months, if not the entire year, so, you know, you know, to get your healing in place. So this is where the seven characters fall into place it. Let's say Sally Sue, Sally Sue is on the roof. Um, her and her husband, they're fixing the roof. Um, it's, it's time for them to remodel their home. That's what they're doing. Sally, Miss Sally falls off of the roof. Oh my God, Miss Sally, you know, broke your leg. So now if Miss Sally and fell off the roof, what's the first place she's going? She's not going to the doctor's office and say, hey, I would like to make an, I'm calling in and make an appointment. I broke my leg. I would like to make an appointment to come in tomorrow. Or she's not going to walk into the doctor's office and walk in with a broken leg, she's going to go to the emergency department. She's going to go to the ER to check out this broken leg. So when she goes to the ER, the provider is going to check her out and say, oh, Miss Sally Sue, you've broken your femur. You've broken your right leg. So when they put the code inside of the chart, they're going to put an, an A on the end of that diagnosis. It's going to be an A. And the A means this is the initial encounter for this broken leg. So anytime you go to the emergency room, whether you're going uh, because you have a headache 
or are you going because you had a heart attack and you got admitted and now they're discharging you? Whenever you're discharged from the hospital, emergency room, they're going to tell you to follow up with your primary care doctor. I don't care what you're going there for. When they tell you to go, they're going to leave you with the words of, please follow up with your primary care physician in the next two to three days. So when this patient, Miss Sally May, Miss Sally Sue, who fell off the roof, when she go to her doctor for her follow-up of her broken leg, they still have to use this broken leg code because that's what you're coming in here for, a broken leg. But providers cannot get paid twice for the same service or a different provider cannot get paid for a service that another provider has already got paid for. It's not no double dipping. I'm gonna get country on this, not no. That's a double negative, but I really want you to understand it. Not no double dipping. Only one time they can get paid. So what happens is when Miss Sally Sue follows up with her primary care doctor for this broken leg, when she goes in, the doctor is going to use this same broken leg code that they use in the emergency room. But this time, the doctor is going to put the provider, excuse me, the provider is going to put a D on the end of the code. That means this is the subsequent encounter. That means this is a follow-up encounter. You've already saw somebody initially when you first broke it, and I'm just following up. <laughs> so in order to get paid the right amount of money, the insurance company will automatically look at this code, see the D on the end, and know that this was a follow-up visit. They'll look at this code, see the A on the end, and automatically know this is this person's first time getting this fracture or whatever injury checked out because it's an A. They see the D. Oh, this is a follow-up. So the S is sequela. A great example of when to use a sequela for uh, external causes, you know how, um, you know, the old people, you say, oh, Lord, every time it rains, my knees get to hurt or my elbows get to hurt when it's going to rain. You know, I know it's going to rain. So let's say that Sally, Sally Sue, you know, she broke a leg or whatever the case and she healed it. Everything healed fine. She went through the year of therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy. It's great. So 10 years down the line, Sally Sue started realizing my the leg that I broke every time that I walk up the steps now, you know, it's bothering me. Or every time it rains, this leg that I broke is bothering me. So Sally Sue is going to make an appointment to follow up on her leg that's broken. They're going to look at her medical records or she's going to tell them, hey, yeah, I broke my leg 10 years ago. And it's bothering me. It's the same leg, the same place. It's the same everything. So when a doctor check her out and say, hmm, well, Miss Ellie Sue, you're having these issues because you broke your leg 10 years ago. So they're going to use the same broke leg code. That's what you're coming in for. But this time they're going to put an S on the end. The S means this is a sequela visit. This is something that happened a long time ago. And it's just coming back to bite you and bother you now. That makes sense, everybody. Yes. 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 Perfect, perfect, perfect. Z codes. <clears throat> Your Z codes are used to describe circumstances or conditions that could influence.